very soon, AMD will release Ryzen, the first Zen-based CPUs. Now, to clarify for the name, Zen is the name of the architecture, like Haswell or Skylake, while Ryzen is the brand name of the first series processors based on Zen, formerly code-named Summit Ridge. Raven Ridge is the code name for the upcoming Zen-based APUs that are also expected to use the Ryzen brand name. So, glad we got that out of the way. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about what we know so far about Ryzen, formerly known as Summit Ridge. So, this is the Zen-based CPUs, desktop CPUs. The goal of Ryzen is to reintroduce AMD into the high-end CPU department. For almost a decade now, Intel has been the performance king, with AMD only really being considered for budget builds. But now, AMD will reintroduce competition. At AMD's New Horizon event, which you can check out coverage of here, AMD announced their flagship 8-core model. Now, this model is a direct competitor to Intel's Core i7-6900K. Here are the specs for both processors. Both will have 8 cores and 16 threads. Yes, 16 threads. This is the first time that we see hyper-threading or simultaneous multi-threading on the AMD side. In terms of frequency, Ryzen will have a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a boost clock that is yet to be announced, while Intel's 6900K has a 3.2 GHz base clock and a 3.7 GHz boost clock. Both of them have 20 MB of combined total cache. In terms of TDP, we have 95 watts for Ryzen and 140 watts for Intel. In terms of price, the uh, price for Ryzen is yet to be announced, but for Intel, it is $1,100. As we saw at the New Horizon event, the performance of Ryzen is on par with its Intel counterpart for a rumored, rumored lower price. The price is not yet confirmed though. Just want to make that clear. But it does all this at a lower TDP. That, that is for sure. Now keep in mind though, the 6900K was using its full boost capability, but Ryzen did not have boost enabled and was stuck at 3.4 gigahertz maximum. So the first thing I need to say is that all Zen CPUs will be multiplier unlocked. So no more paying extra just for the ability to overclock. That ability will depend on the motherboard, but more on that later. Ryzen will feature Sensemi technology, which is really cool and includes five features. First, pure power. This technology optimizes the CPU to use less power while delivering the performance required of it at any given time. Precision boost allows the frequency to be tuned in increments as low as 25 megahertz. Typically, CPUs can only adjust at 100 megahertz increments. What these smaller increments mean is that when the CPU hits the thermal limit, for example, instead of going down a whole 0.1 gigahertz, a Ryzen CPU may only go down 0 0.025 gigahertz. Minimal performance is lost and the thermal barrier is evaded. Now the third technology is my personal favorite, and it is called Extended Frequency Range. This uses a load of sensors inside the Ryzen processor to detect its temperature and whatnot, and adjust its max frequency accordingly. So I don't really know how this whole boost clock is going to work if we have this. But in essence, it is a limited form of automatic overclocking, and all AM4 motherboards will support Extended Frequency Range, not just the overclockable ones. So that's... That's really cool. I mean, it's, it's auto overclocking and it's covered by warranty. So, neural net prediction and smart prefetch are an AI technology and a sophisticated learning algorithm that help the CPU learn about the applications that you are running to optimize, predict, and prepare itself to provide fast and responsive computing. To be a little more specific, neural net prediction is an artificial intelligence inside of each Ryzen processor that uses a neural network to learn more about what you are using it for. It can then anticipate what exactly you need from it and optimizes itself accordingly. Smart Prefetch uses sophisticated learning algorithms to understand the inner workings of your applications 
and anticipate what data they might need. So it's not necessarily making Ryzen more powerful, it's just being able to get the right data at the right time to make it more efficient. All Ryzen models will support these technology. Yes, that's right, all models, plural. Right now we only have the details about an 8-core model, but upon release there will be more available, that is for sure. But what is not for sure is what exactly each model will be, and nor is this specific naming or press. All we know is there will be an 8-core. We don't know what other models are, we don't know what they're called, and we don't know any of the presses. But still, that's pretty good. Now on to motherboards, the newest piece of information. The AM4 socket will be the standard universal AMD socket from now on. And AMD's goal is to be using this socket until at least 2020. But newer standards such as DDR5 or PCI Express Gen 4, which AMD intends to stay up to date with this time around, mind you, may require more bandwidth and therefore more pins and a new socket. But the goal is to use AM4 for as long as possible. And since then, CPUs have a large portion of the chipset on the chip itself, including basic connectivity, that allows for a wider variety of CPUs to, say, to use the same socket on the same motherboard. So when the next-gen CPUs, or just the next-gen CPUs come out, really, you can just swap out the CPU and the same motherboard will work, which is awesome. You can check out some of those motherboards that were announced at CES 2017 here on my channel. Now, one interesting thing to note, however, is that all of these motherboards have video ports, but the first wave of Ryzen processors will have no integrated graphics. That is because the same motherboards will be compatible with the APUs as well. All we know so far about the APUs is that they will be Zen-based for the CPU, and they will be Vega-based for the GPU, which means potentially, not confirmed, but potentially, VR-capable integrated graphics. There will be five chipsets available on these motherboards, with a fairly simple distinction between each one. A320 is the base and allows basic compatibility with all of your devices. To enable overclocking, you step up to B350. To enable Crossfire and SLI, you move up to X370. In terms of small form factors, it is not being ignored this time and there are two unique chipsets designed for Mini-ITX. A300 cannot overclock and X300 can overclock. There's no SLI or anything like that because it's Mini-ITX, I mean, come on. Now, since Zen is a system on chip that provides most of the connectivity on the chip itself, that actually leaves a lot of room on the motherboard for other features such as dedicated audio and wireless solutions. So yes, that dedicated chipset is for more than just having the same socket on multiple, so having the same socket supporting multiple processors. It's also freeing up a lot of space on the motherboard for some really cool stuff. And it can also, on budget motherboards bring the price down. Again, all Ryzen models are un unlocked, and with B350, X370, and X300 motherboards, you will be able to get overclocking. All motherboards natively support USB 3.1 Gen 2, SATA 3 6 gigabits per second, PCI Express Gen 3, and NVMe drives. Personally, my favorite motherboard is the ASRock X370 Gaming K4 followed by Gigabyte's X370 Gaming K5 in all black. Those are, those are some nice looking motherboards. Existing AMD coolers with the latch mount will be compatible with the AM4 socket, but if your cooler has a custom bracket, it will not work anymore due to, due to the different physical size of the socket. Luckily, many companies including Corsair and Noctua are already making adapters and compatible coolers. Actually, on the WAN show recently, there was featured a EK water block mount, and there, everyone was just assuming, oh yeah, the AM4 mount and the AM3 plus mount are the exact same thing, so it'll all work. No, that is not the case. They are not compatible. Okay? So, just, no. They're not compatible, and that is confirmed from AMD. So, to conclude, I'm really excited for Ryzen and its capabilities. From what we've seen so far, it's extremely powerful, and if I can afford it, meaning less than $500 for the CPU and motherboard, then I am planning on buying it for myself, that, that flagship 8-core, and finding the far reaches of its capabilities. So, assuming I can get that 8-core with the motherboard for under 500 bucks, expect to see a video comparing it to AMD's previous 8-core, the FX8370. You can see my um, personal rig update where I added that in right here. 
I will also be comparing Ryzen to Intel's 8-core, the Core i7 5960X Extreme Edition. Not the 6900K, my friend's PC has a 5960X, so I'm using that. Yep. So yeah, I'm super excited for that. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but we do know it will be Q1 of 2017 of this year. So sometime in late February, early March is the current estimate. Again, estimate. So if you're already subscribed, good, stay subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do not miss my videos on Ryzen. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and also leave a comment down below telling me what you think of Ryzen and Zen in general. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much to AMD for uh, working with me to make sure that all of the information in this video is correct. You guys are a great help. And I will see you in the next one.